What I was also going to talk about today was the ways or the purposes of the Holy Spirit. And I know that the topic of the Holy Spirit can kind of throw a lot of people off because they feel like they don't know that much about the Holy Spirit or the way that he works within us, who he is, or the Trinity, because I know for a long time I had questions about that too. But I want to just clarify things for everyone. And this is not going to be like a full, you know, study, but it's just going to be things to open your eyes to how God works within us and how he sent the Holy Spirit down to us. And it's the greatest gift that we could ever have. It's the way that we're able to be a Christian in this life. So I'll start off with Acts 2, verse 38 and 39. Okay. So this is when the Holy Spirit already came, when they were in the upper room, and they were all uh, basically baptized or had the Holy Spirit rest upon them, and that's when they were empowered to start the ministry. And this is when Peter, who, who was the one who denied Jesus, who now was empowered and, and had the boldness to start speaking in front of all these people the truth. And this is what he said. And this is, this is really important. Verse 38, Acts 2. And Peter answered them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of and release from your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to and for you and your children and to and for all that are far away. To and for as many as the Lord our God invites and bids to come to himself. So that right there shows you that when you are born again, when you ask for forgiveness and you are born again, you permanently have the Holy Spirit living within you. I know a lot of, I used to think that to, to have the Holy Spirit within me, I would need to somehow struggle and learn to speak tongues, which made no sense. But that's how I used to think. That's how traditions were. Um, but you have to know that when you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit within you. You have him for fellowship. And what people get confused about is the ministry part where we are baptized with him. That's when we surrender and we are baptized with him and we are empowered to do the ministry. But remember that when we are born again, we have the Holy Spirit within us forever. He'll never leave us. So I want you, everyone to know that if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit within you. It's very important to know because a lot of people feel like you know, I don't know if I even know God or if I even have the Holy Spirit. I don't know anything about him. How is he going to help me? You know, you feel disconnected because maybe you haven't surrendered and, and started, you know, praying in that prayer language. Or you feel like, well, I don't know if I have any gifts. Those gifts are not from your body. They're from the Holy Spirit. And that comes with time. That comes with surrender. But knowing that when you're born again, you actually have him there always. He's always wanting to talk to you and to help you through your situation. And that's exactly what you were talking about, where that's kind of how we have that fellowship available to us always. Um, <clears throat> I also want to talk about that the, the feeling. That's really important, too, is we can get caught up on feelings. Right now, my body feels like a bag of potatoes. We're all <laughs> we all got hit with, like a, I don't know, some kind of sickness. So, you know, I don't feel great. I'm not, like, contagious. I shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> but the point is I don't feel great, but I do know the truth that the Holy Spirit is within me, and he, he's the comforter. That's what I'm going to get into next is the many, the many names for him. But he is our comforter, and he's within us, and I know the truth that he will never leave me or forsake me. Now, this is when Jesus was talking to the disciples and saying that it's actually better for the physical Jesus to leave because we, we all need that help. Imagine it, it would be impossible for Jesus to 
take time within everyone's life and help them and counsel them physically one at a time. So there had to be a way where God could individually focus on each one of us and have that fellowship that we need and that help. And that's, that's where he tells them right here, verse 7, however, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable. And then I'm reading out of Amplified and it's saying good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away because if I do not go away, the comforter, and then there are illicit names, the counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. So he has so many, so many different roles and, and things that minister to us in every part of our life. And... And we all, we all have the availability to have the individual time with God. And that's what, that's what I really want you guys to remember and focus on whenever you're struggling. I also want to talk about the other thing that the Holy Spirit does is he guides us into, into the truth. And that's in verse uh, 12 through 14. Same chapter, John 16. Actually, yeah, verse 13 through 14. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own message or on his own authority. He will tell whatever he hears from the Father. And he will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. And he will honor and glorify me because he will take care. He will take of what is mine and will reveal it to you. Now that kind of helps you to see what, how the Trinity operates and how, what is the, the ways or what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives. A lot of the times we need to honestly just, when we, when we lack wisdom or understanding and it feels like, we honestly don't know what's going on with our lives or, or with God in, in our position with Him, or we don't understand how He operates, we have that availability with the Holy Spirit to ask the truth. And He's, gonna, he's willing to give us that truth that we need, that we need to know about God, that He answers our questions. Okay. I want to... Let's show an example of, of Stephen in Acts. So Acts 6, verse 8 through 10. And I thought this was interesting how the Holy Spirit actually helped Stephen to, uh, to be able to defend his faith. So that's another thing that the Holy Spirit will do. Was, when you're in those positions where you're going to be tested, whether it's by people questioning you or or it's going to be a, a sickness or a deadly disease that attacks your family. And these trials and these tests, that's when the Holy Spirit really shows. In our weakness, that's when the Holy Spirit will strengthen us. He'll, stro he'll show his strength. So right here in uh, Acts 6, verse 8. Now Stephen, full of grace and power, worked great wonders and signs among the people. However, some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen as it was called, and of the Syrians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, arose to debate and dispute with Stephen. But they were not able to resist the intelligence and the wisdom and the spirit with which by whom he spoke. Now, that's going to take some time to start to mature and grow into, but honestly, I'm noticing in my own life that before at work, I never had that boldness to start to come up to people and talk to them about, about Christ or be able to withstand uh, them even joking about me being a Christian because that will happen. You'll, you'll see all kinds of reactions. You don't know what people carry inside, uh, what kind of demons they have, literally, or I don't know, maybe their mind is just 
their character is just flawed and they need, you know, they need that help. Um, but you never know what situation you're going to get into where you're going to be attacked, where you're going to be hated on or even spat on just like Jesus was. But that's where that Holy Spirit, he, he comes and he helps us to stay strong in our faith and actually be able to turn the tables and be able to turn their, their eyes and their faith onto Christ. And that's what I've noticed at work, too. Whenever I, you know, I actually give in and step out, he'll, like, give me the boldness and the confidence to stand strong in what I believe. And a lot of times before, you know, I'd be more skittish and I wouldn't come off as, like, I even believe what, I, what I'm telling them. But if you, if you take time or take those chances to just step out and give in, he'll keep boldening you and you'll, you'll get that close relationship with him. And the other part of, of this relationship and this fellowship with the Holy Spirit is continually being filled with him. We always struggle and we always wonder why we're, we're not uh, being free from this sin or this addiction that's in our lives or maybe our anger issues or impatience. But when you have a bucket full of, let's say, uh, how do you get all the air out of a bucket? Let's say that was the sin or the anger and the, and the hate fill it with water. That'll make sure there's no air, empty air in the bucket. You get what I'm saying? So continually stay filled. And how does that, how does that work? How do you stay filled? Like, like uh, Alessia was saying, you, you take every day, whatever chance you get, to worship, to focus on him. And I, there's some days where I, I don't, uh, you know, I, maybe I just kind of think I'm too busy to spend that time to worship, but He's never going to leave you. He's still there with you. It's about you choosing to, you know what? I'm going to snap back, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to worship. I'm going to stay in this. And that's where you'll grow, and you'll mature, and you'll learn to habitually live. I'm probably creating a challenge for the cameraman, <laughs> walking back and forth. I just realized I'll stand still. Uh, <laughs> giving him a job security? Okay. Okay. Uh, so he, what was I talking about? Yeah, the feeling. So the worship, the worship, and just honestly, sometimes you can just, like, for what works for me is honestly just laying still and listening to, like, instrumental or, or music, and you just focus on him. And that could be the feeling, or listening to the word, reading the word, will be the Holy Spirit also filling you up. A lot of times we need that first jolt, and that can happen sometimes when he'll prompt you to come up to the stage and maybe a, a, an elder will pray for you. And you should give in to those, to those guidance, to that feeling, if, if it feels like it's peaceful, like Alyssa was saying, if you have peace with that. Because a lot of times he'll guide you to, to have la a hand laid upon you, because that is biblical, to be filled, because a lot of times we're stuck in our own minds and we can't get past that personal barrier by ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to continually um, walk in the Spirit. So this is the next thing I want to talk about is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. It's going to be talking about walking in the Spirit. In verse 16, it says, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. And I'm reading from Amplified Classic, which kind of expands whatever the original manuscript was written in. And it'll just expand on it in English. That's why I like, I just sometimes like reading in it. And it helps you to understand more of what they were trying to say in the original text. So it might not say, you know, obviously word for word or as many words. Galatians 5, chapter, or, yeah, Galatians 5, verse 16. But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh of human nature without God. I was listening to a, a sermon today kind of about 
walking in the Holy Spirit because and I, and I heard the the term an itch lust is like an itch or sin is like an itch that will not go away it never says that these desires will go away but he'll help you overcome to not want to to not actually itch that lust or that temptation or that sin when you are so filled or so full of the spirit you don't want to itch that itch because you already have that joy you already have that peace you don't want to fall into that lust or that temptation that's honestly how i overcame it and that's how everyone needs to overcome it i was talking to my foreman today at work and he has um you know issues with with the drinking and he's trying to overcome it through taking uh like dmt which is this new age practice where you like you take uh, this special drug and it takes you on like some kind of spiritual journey where you confront your demons this is actually happening and this is happening in christian circles sad to say it's it's more like new age kind of it's kind of becoming more popular um i told them i was like look you can only overcome these addictions these serious issues by being guided and being filled with the holy spirit because you're not going to want to do the bad or you're not going to even need to do it you're not going to want to um drink let's say or watch you know bad things you're not going to need that uh that desire to feel love in the in all the wrong places um you're going to get love in the right places love that you that the right way that god wanted you to to receive that love and that's by uh that's by walking in the spirit it's by being filled continually now this also talked about the fruits the fruit of the spirit a lot of people think that you um you have to work at these fruits and and try to grow your character and work hard to be to be full of joy and work hard to be patient and for a long time i thought that that's what you do you have to work on your character work on yourself and keep reminding yourself but when you are continually surrendering and being filled and actually just worshiping and glorifying that's when the fruit will slowly grow onto you it's not something that you force it's something that comes from within you from that holy spirit bubbling up out and when you're squeezed and you're put under pressure the good fruit will show you know that the verses where it says everything that you uh, say or do in private or in secret will be showed openly people that can be taken in a good way or a bad way if it's a bad way people will tell that you're sinning because it'll be shown openly your anger will come out you're going to you're going to start to say uh cuss you know you're going to start to cuss and people can kind of tell that you have this anger boiling within you and you say well how, what do i do about it how do i fix my you know my my issues my anger or anything that comes out and that's what what you do in private will be shown openly what you do in private what matters that's what matters the most whether it's it's starting to get into a ministry or it's trying to um overcome you know your own faults in your personality what you do in private will be shown openly and i want you guys to take advantage of that in a good way it's all about that private and that personal level with with god with the holy spirit and that's that's the big purpose of the holy spirit right there that's uh that's mainly what I wanted to speak to you today. So Olga, if you have any finishing words. No. Yeah, let's pray. Okay, let's everybody stand up. Um I want us to in these times just to focus and remember that the Holy Spirit is within you. If everyone here is truly born again, you know that you know that you you ask for that forgiveness. and that you are forgiven you believe that and you take hold of that remember that the holy spirit is within you and you have all of this peace and joy available to you but it's going to take that time in private to openly 
worship to him, to focus on him, just to cry out for him, to ask questions daily, fellowship with him like a friend. 